welcome to Cellular Healing TV. I'm your host, Meredith Dykstra, and this is episode number 162. We have our resident cellular healing specialist, Dr. Dan Pompa, on the line, of course. And today we welcome special guest, Dr. Eric Zielinski. And we have a really exciting topic for you today. We have not bridged this yet on Cellular Healing TV. And we're going to be talking about all the benefits and the therapeutic use of essential oils. And Dr. Eric is an expert on this topic, so we're going to delve in to oils and just their different benefits and, um, and a lot of different connections they have to other aspects of our health. So before we jump in, let me tell you a little bit more about Dr. Eric. Uh, founder of the Essential Oils Revolution Summits that have reached more than 265,000 people across the globe, Dr. Eric Zielinski is a formally trained public health researcher and aromatherapist that has created the most extensive biblical health database on the internet. His website, DrEricZ.com, is visited by hundreds of thousands of natural health seekers every month, and he has rapidly become the go-to resource for essential oils education and spiritual inspiration through social media. Welcome, Dr. Eric, to Cellular Healing TV. Oh, thank you much for having me. It really is an honor. I've been following your work for quite a while, and I'm just excited. I'm excited to share the message with you all. Yeah, hey, uh, something uh, we have in common is our faith. You know, I, I love your message, no doubt about it. So I was really excited to interview you today. So I, I got to hear a little bit. The bio doesn't do it justice. I mean, how did you even get into healthcare? Kind of tell us your journey there. And then, of course, how did you get into uh, essential oils? So just kind of start here and give us a little bit. You know, you know, Dr. Papa, it, it's just, it's a transformation. And it's just been a beautiful journey. I'm 37 years old. And when I look back, I look back, I'm like, wow, God, you did all that, you know, and I could see how it played out. But at the time, I didn't know what was happening. And the, the really the, 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 the crux of the story is I was sick. I was a sick child. Now, when I say that, I wasn't at the Ronald McDonald house. I didn't have lupus. I didn't have cancer. I was just chronically not well, had aches and pains. I had um, cystic acne, chronic GI issues, bloating, gas. I mean, we're talking things that would plague a teenager. Yeah. And not only that, but when I was younger, um, chronic ear infections and sore throats. And so my parents elected to have my adenoids and my tonsils taken out, you know, vital parts of the lymphatic system. So, you know, it all started um, just living on the standard American diet. I was not breastfed. Um, my mother elected not to for various reasons. And I think that's a very critical part. I just had poor gut health. And, you know, also I didn't have a very strong spiritual background as well, emotionally, mentally drained. As a, t a late teen, early adult, I fell hard. I fell hard in alcoholism, narcotic, drugs, depression. I even was suicidal and suicide ideation. And so here I was, 22, 23 years old. On the outside, I looked pretty good. You know, I had the MTV six pack body, but on the inside, I was rotting, drinking a pot of coffee a day just to get through the day, right? To pass my classes. And when I graduated school, I had no real purpose. I had no vision. I had no real guidance on what to do. And I was ripe. I was at that rock bottom moment. And that's when I met Christ. And it was one of those spiritual transformations. Wow. And within, I mean, kid you not, immediately freed from my nicotine addiction. I was smoking a pack a day. I did, wow. I stopped drugs. I stopped drinking. I stopped my pot of coffee. I stopped cussing. I used to swear like a sailor. My whole life changed. I had a dramatic transformation. Wow. And here's the key, Dr. Pampa, is my mentor at the time was 60 years old and the healthiest person I knew and still is. And he said, Eric, your body's a temple of the Holy Spirit. You have to take care of it. Being a Christian doesn't mean you just read your Bible and go to church. It's a whole mm -hmm. lifestyle. And he started oh, playing with me. And that right there as a 23-year-old young man imparted something to my spirit that took me here now 14 years later. And my journey took me through Life University, chiropractic college, took me to Emory University to study public health. And here I am today. And essential oils, it's just, I got to say, it's a part of the puzzle. And I yeah. noticed that when I hosted my online summit a couple years ago, that there was so much misinformation out there, especially regarding the biblical health piece. I'm like, you know what? I got to learn more about this. So I'm studying aromatherapy. I really yeah. dove into it. And that's what people want. It's unbelievable. Hundreds of thousands of people online on my website. They just want me to teach them about oils. And so. Yeah, that's awesome. <clears throat> wow. I, that's, that's quite a story. I honestly, I didn't know. I, I, I had no idea you know, that you went through that, you know, I, I talk about my from pain to purpose, you know, man, you've got your pain to purpose, that, that's for darn sure. So, you know, with that said, I mean, uh, obviously, you know, today's topic is pulling in essential oils and <clears throat> with a biblical background uh, that you have, 
uh, essential oils fits that. I mean, essential oils go back into biblical times. You know, I mean, uh, all the way from frankincense to myrrh. I mean, <laughs> you talk about it all the time, right? I mean, these are some of God's healing tools. So is that kind of what struck you into the, the thing of essential oils? I mean, were you reading some of this biblically and applied it? How did that transition occur? Yeah, it's a good question. Mm -hmm. You know, during school, um, as I'm sure you remember many, many moons ago, I was supporting the family during the chiropractic college, and the student was really good about it. So I had a, I was really got myself in a position where I was writing. I was a medical writer just to pay the bills. And one yeah. of my clients asked me during school asked me to write a series of public health reports on essential oils, and that was the first time, the first time I was introduced to that side of essential oils because predate back to that. My wife's been using essential oils since we've been married. She has her her routine. I don't know what she does. I kind of do now, but she puts them here, there, everywhere. And when we delivered four babies at home in the first home birth, it, it really blew my mind how prepared she was with aromatherapy through all the stages of labor. And her story's profound because, I mean, her skin was miraculously healed through essential oils. Um, if we have a moment, I could tell you about that. But at the end of the day, I didn't think anything of them because several years ago, I tried to use essential oils and it didn't work for me. Mm. And I got to say, I was disenchanted because here I am, all about natural health. I saw online, hey, natural solutions for of certain health conditions I was trying to battle. It didn't do anything for me. I'm like, you know, this stuff's just smelly stuff. I'll leave it to Sabrina. I'll leave it to, to the ladies. And I was that guy that marginalized, it, you know, who wants to go playing basketball smelling like Ylang Lang? The dudes are going to take with my man card. You know what I mean? So uh, I, I just like, I put it away. But when I hit that research, and then that's really what brought me to Christ. Yeah, wow. I don't have one of those like, oh, I went to church, had an altar call. No, I studied biblical study. Yeah. I studied archaeology. I For months, I studied. I read books. And that, i just that kind of guy. So the God knows that's how you reach me. It's through, it has to go through my head first. It goes through my heart. Yeah, me too, man. Me too. I'm the same way. I, believe me, I, I was the same way. I was like, okay, I had to prove. I had to disprove the whole evolutionary process or prove it to myself or whatever process God had to take me through. But uh, yeah, yeah, he'll reach us where we are. So in that, though, so you started finding out more about essential oils. Yeah, and this is the key. I started researching. I started looking at the literature. And then the question, just like how it was when I became a Christian, the question when I became a Christian was, okay, it was about the Bible. Either the Bible really is the Word of God or it's just a really cool book. And yeah, that's I, what proved to me, and I looked at all the, you know, the prophecies that were fulfilled. So when it came to essential oils, very similar. I'm like, okay. This stuff is either hocus pocus or I didn't do it right when I tried. What was going on? Yeah. You found out I wasn't really using essential oils. Flashlight, everyone, light bulb. Dr. Robert Pappas, foremost chemist in this area. I had the privilege of interviewing him twice for my summits. According to Dr. Pappas, who has tested virtually every essential oil on the market, 75% of the oils on the market are adulterated, which means one of two things, really. They're either fake, synthetic, or they're highly diluted to the point where you don't even know what you're getting. Yeah. So I bought junk knockoff stuff at the health food store that wasn't even real therapeutic grade essential oils. Mm -hmm. And so then when I started looking into the brands, I was like, whoa, this is what frankincense really should smell like. This is oh. how lemon should taste. This is how I use tea tree to battle, let's say, whatever, toe fungus or whatever it might be. And that is when my world changed because I got the real deal. And most people out there, they don't get the real deal. They don't know where to find it. They don't know how. And so it was really transform, um, transforming that. And now it's part of my, if you look at my medicine cabinet, most of it's essential oils now. To me, it was the missing piece of the pie because I haven't, you know, I, up until you know, the last few years, they just weren't a part of my protocol. Yeah. So, I mean, how, how do these, why do they work? Right. Let's say you're getting the, the good oils and we can talk a little bit about that. You know, some of your favorite you know, brands perhaps, but you know, um, what, what do they do? Why do they work? Why are they so effective? Okay. Revelation chapter 22, the leaves of the trees of the healing of the nations. Why? How? The essential oil. The essential oil is what God gave the plant to protect the plant from vectors, from, from flies, from microorganisms that attack it, from fungal infections, you name it. It heals the plant, protects the plant, nourishes so many different aspects. So when we extract those healing properties of the plant, it's essentially, we all know herbs are good. We all know roots. Look at native medicine around the world. 
But if you extract them, if you get them in a concentrated form, you just made medicine. And a lot of medicines are based off of the chemical compounds in plants, like aspirin, perfect example, birch, right? So it's essentially, you could use lavender, you could get, you know, a pound of lavender, make an incense of it or do whatever you want with a tea. But if you use a lavender oil, you basically just 10, 20 X the power. And so we need to remember one thing, the essential oils that we have today are really nothing what people used to use centuries and millennium ago. They didn't have distillation like we do, right? So they didn't have the, they didn't have um, cold pressing extraction. They couldn't get what we have. What we have today is unbelievably strong and the ancients never experienced it. Wow. So yeah, I mean, when you look at Jesus, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, Jesus didn't have essential oils. He had- can, I, can I make a, I have a question for you. You know, no. I'm playing devil's advocate here. Um, you know, we, being a part of building out a lot of products and supplements, it's oftentimes hard for us to find, let's say, ginseng. Yep. You know, we, we, we look at, you know, the, the graphs on it, the chromography, and we look at the, the power of the plant, and it's very difficult because even the organic ones that come in, they're grown in such terrible soils, or they're grown in soils that really ginseng wasn't meant to be grown in. So, you know, finding where ginseng originally grew, the mineral substrates in the ground, et cetera, you know, makes that plant thrive and be strong. So today is, yeah, I get it. You're, you're right, man. I mean, the extraction process is no doubt would be better than it was back then. But what about finding frankincense from a good soil and where the plant comes from that we extracted from? Is that a factor? 100%. And, and we have found indigenous sourcing is the key. You know, my father-in-law is a retired agri-scientist from Dow Chemical. Um, and, and I haven't shared this on another podcast yet, but I, it's time for me to come out. He actually helped develop GMOs. Oh, he worked sweet. with Monsanto. I married the enemy. Like, I seriously should have had my wife checked by a private investigator. So we laugh about it. But you did better, man. You didn't better. No, I know. It's awesome. So we're still trying to convert him. So here he was. He told me, you cannot compare naturally indigenous plant process. I mean, you said that the chemical compounds in the indigenous plants, you can't compare to non-indigenous. It just doesn't even work. Because again, we have, I live in Georgia. I live in Atlanta. I could grow a fig tree in my backyard and have pretty tasty fruit, but the vitamins and minerals in that fig won't compare to one in Jerusalem. So yeah. we need to remember that. And also, I'll, I hate to say it for folks out there, but getting around the organic thing is getting virtually impossible. And I don't, I don't say that because I don't want to be defeatist. But it's becoming almost impossible to get pure anything anymore. Pure food, pure water. And we have found essential oils have been tested. And there was a major conference in Italy a couple years ago. They found that organic essential oils had pesticides residue in them. How? Well, because there's runoff water. Because Monsanto, again, thanks, father-in-law, Monsanto is spraying five miles down the road and drift wind and vectors and flies and bees. So, Dan, I know you know this, but people need to realize there's no guarantee of safety out there anymore. Yeah. So we have to minimize the best that we can. And here's the key. Here's why I mentioned that. You get indigenous source plants because the way that God planted them, they don't need the pesticides. If they're truly an indigenous plant, they don't need it. They shouldn't. Absolutely. That's the key. So I'd rather choose an indigenous plant over an organic plant that's in some, you know, farm in Idaho. Me too. And when it comes to essential oils, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was a great answer. I appreciate that answer. So looking for an essential oil, then we want one that's extracted properly. Yep. using cold pressing, right? Not denaturing it, using heat, et cetera. You might want to add to that. But we also want to find where it coming from indigenous plants as their source versus just organic plants grown in Idaho. So, true. Sure. Yeah, and one thing too, when it comes to heat, um, it's a little bit different because we're not dealing with proteins being denatured. You know, the chemical compounds in these essential oils are stuff that you probably, you know, you probably forgot, Dan. It's in biochemistry class, ketones, esters, alcohols, um, you know, terpenes. Like, what's that? There's no vitamins or minerals or proteins in oils. Right. So they actually have to be steam distilled, so they need to evaporate. And so what an essential oil is, folks, it's the volatile organic compound. Volatile meaning it evap evaporates. So if there, is a, if there is a chemical compound in the plant that can't evaporate, 
then it won't get into the essential oil. It will be too heavy. It will be too dense. It will be part of the hydrosol. It will be part of the leftover water that's very healthy, very good. But see, the essential oil is really the creme de la creme of highly volatile, very light. We're talking like very low Daltons, if you guys are chemistry nerds out there. On the Daltons. Molecular weight. Daltons are molecular weight. Yep. So uh, we're talking very low on the Dalton scale compared to something else. So um, we could geek out on this a little bit for some of the chemistry folks, but the reality is they're very special and essentially what we smell. And that's what we got to remember when you're walking through that rose garden, you're not going to find a pool of rose oil. It doesn't exist. It needs to be extracted. But if you're walking and brush up against the plant, you'll smell the vapor. You'll smell the essence. That's the volatile organic compound. If you smell so a little bit about the Dalton, which is the molecular weight, I know this from my own biochemistry and product development, that for something to go into a cell, it has to be a certain molecular weight, um, you know, something from 200 to 300, maybe even up to 600. But um, is that another reason why essential oils work is because they're able to get into the cell and then affect the, the DNA? And they're lipid soluble. That's the key. Every one of them are lipid soluble. So when you think about that, how many things can't cross that cellular membrane because of the phospholipid protection? Drugs are virtually, so many drugs are virtually useless because of that. Essential right. oils. So there have been studies, Dan, I don't condone pharmaceutical use unless absolutely necessary, but there have been studies that show essential oil therapy with drugs help the drug, drugs be more effective, namely yeah. chemo. Some chemotherapies just can't cross the blood-brain barrier. For example, to get glioblastoma and other, you know, astrocytoma type of um, cancers. Mm -hmm. But you apply those drugs with essential oils, it essentially opens up the gates so the drugs can do their yeah. job. Yeah, I, no, that's awesome. So now we know, you know, a lot more than we did in the beginning. So our viewers are already excited. But now here's what our viewers are asking and our listeners. <laughs> okay, great. So. Which, what type of oils can I use for these type of symptoms and conditions? And, you know, I know that we're not saying that this oil is a cure for this condition. I don't want to get you in trouble here. Um, but, you know, let, let's talk. And Meredith, this is probably in your questions. Because Meredith, by the way, she loves essential oils. She's very good at essential oils. She always hooks me up with essential oils. So thank you, Meredith, for that. But let's talk about that. Because honestly, that's what our viewers want. So Meredith, you could fire away without naming different conditions. But... Uh, Doc, what are some of your favorites and for what conditions? It all depends on what you need and it all depends on what you want. And I, I, need to, I need to remember people when it comes to essential oil therapy, there's nothing like prevention. And I, in, the, in the guise of this, and I'd love to, if we don't have an hour to talk, I wish we had an hour just about this topic, but we got to, folks, we got to stay away from the antibacterial products, the hand sanitizers, and all those that cause toxic overload in the body and that's where essential oils are worth their weight in gold because mm -hmm. they replace those products so that's where i get people to start so that's a great thing so where do you what do you use every day that sounds like things you're using every day meredith what do you use every day go ahead let's hear it yeah yeah i mean yeah i use the blend too i never use hand soaps especially if i'm not at home where i am you know kind of more natural soaps i use um essential oil blends just i carry the oils in my purse and i just rub them on my hands as natural antibacterial so i have a blend and it has um, um clove in it and, and wild orange um, sometimes i use rosemary or cypress on my hands uh, lavender of course you know is, is a nice antibacterial as well and those are just like simple oil blends you can keep with you instead of using those toxic soaps Doc, what do you use? So, Dan, I just wanted to, I just got out of the gym, wanted to freshen up, took a nice shower before the interview. Um, I'm staying away from lavender. I, I don't want, Frank, I don't want vetiver, lavender, things to calm me down. So we created a joyful blend. It's uh, with some jojoba, some almond oil, with orange, lemon, vanilla. It just perks me up. I mean, those are citrus oils that have been proven, literally, to work in the limbic system to boost mood lower depression and gets you in a better state of consciousness. So that's what I want to do right now. I want to be kind of, you know, I'm not one of those that's laid back and I, I like, I'm just high energy, especially when I do an interview. So that's what, what I'm going to do. You put here, did you sniff it? Yeah. No. You know, for me, when it comes to the lotion, like I actually use this as a body lotion throughout my yeah. body. Okay. Um, but there are many ways that you could use them. I'm actually, um, you can probably see it maybe in the background. I have a diffuser with a few yeah. oils that are, again, are very up, uplifting. Very. I have 
Do you? No, yeah. I have a couple. You mind going through it? They're great. I have some that maybe people aren't familiar with because I, a lot of folks that follow me, um, they're part of a network marketing company, and that's how they get their oils. And I found that I like to go outside of that world a little bit to get some really cool esoteric oils like like yuzu, like apoponics, like elemi. Um, love those oils. You know, that's what I'm. That's what I'm smelling right now, and just very uplifting, very energetic. And you could use oils virtually for whatever you want. So that's the thing. When I ask, when people ask me, I always say, well, what do you want to accomplish? You want to accomplish a sedative, calming, you know, you want to be uplifted. Are we trying to balance blood sugar? So we kind of go with that. And then we, we really target an approach for people. Yeah, and I, I think let's, let's mention a few things and some yeah. things we can target for that. But let's hit the 800-pound gorilla here right, in the, right here up front. Okay, you know, so many of these oils are network marketing. I mean, gosh, Young Living. I mean, that was the original one. I, I, I'm assuming they're still around, right? Um, and then the new ones, Deterra. I bet you there's another one I probably don't even know about, you know. But so, you know, I, I think that these oils are the perfect thing for network marketing, right? Because people love to try them. It's basic. They can use this. They turn their friends on to them. And I, I think that's why those things, you know, those companies explode. Uh, you know, but I'm always a little cautious. I, I have nothing against network marketing. I, I, I don't. I, I, if the product's good, I think it's a great thing. However, you know, typically it's overpriced, you know, but again, there's some products that we love, like ASEA. It's the only way to get it. It's a very unique product, right? I mean, there's some other products that, you know, I, I have no problem. If that's the only way to get it, we'll get it. But in, for doctors, it's hard because they don't want to look at like they're just putting people in a network marketing thing. There's that, that, you know, I mean, are those some of the oils you're using, the ones in the network marketing, or do you, you know, I mean, let's discuss it. I know we have some on our website. I mean, yeah. what do you, what's your comment to that? <laughs> I don't even know what I'm asking. Yeah, I actually use several. And here is my, I will never compromise on this stance because it's who I am. I will not tell people the brands I use, nor will I recommend them for a variety of reasons. But I will say there are several good brands out there and we do use oils from network marketing companies. I use oils from direct suppliers. I use from a variety of different things. You have a, you mentioned a couple good points and I've gotten this question so many times because you know what? And reason why Dan, as a public health researcher, I'm convinced that bias is very important to avoid, and I don't know anyone, literally, I don't know anyone. I challenge you out there watching, listening, find an essential oil educator on the internet who doesn't sell oils. You're not yeah. me. period. I'm the only one. And here's the thing, once I started telling people, you know what, I'm not gonna sell these oils, hundreds of thousands of people started flocking to me because they realize I'm a safe place to land. So with that, that's the reason. By the way, that's why you're on the show. You yeah. know, because what was the first thing I said to Meredith, it's like, oh, Meredith, I, I would love to bring the topic, but yeah. I don't want someone just, you know, hucking what they think is good. You know, I mean, I, I, I try to bring the products, I try to carry multiple products and I try to bring the products that I use myself, that I believe in, that I've researched and, you know, that I'm a part of somehow. So, I mean, but our viewers are still going to say, okay, I know you're not selling a product, Eric, but give us the top three or five that you know that are indigenous sources that are processing yeah. it correctly so like, people are gonna ask right Meredith so, so here's my solution to that go to my website drericz.com look up the word brand and you're gonna find the article how to choose a brand because here's the thing about it and, and this is really important I've seen people that they in a sense or ignore the organoleptic aspect of this for people who don't know what organoleptic is how does a substance, how does an essential oil, how does a new food respond to your body? You break out in hives, you get a headache, how does it taste and feel? You need to be emotionally sound and you need to be, you need to respond well to something. So here's what I've seen. I've seen, quote, the purest oil on the market give someone a headache. Why? Because maybe that species, that source just didn't respond well. So what you want to do, there are very, I mean, again, I use several, but you want to find one that works for you. And to me, that's the beauty of functional nutrition, functional whatever you want to call it, because there's so many different ways of looking at this, is finding what works for you. Because again, I'm a 37-year-old white guy from Sicily in Poland. What is going to work for me isn't going to work for, let's say, a 74-year-old African-American from Kenya. And I think we forget that. And if you're a network marketer out there, bless your heart, make a couple bucks. But remember, your oil isn't the only oil on the market. There's a lot of others out there. So folks, you want to try. And here's what you do. You're going to go first 
to some family and friends and get a referral. I'm a, I'm a referral junkie, whether it's my dentist, my chiropractor, whoever it is, I want someone that's proven and tested by a loved one. So go ask your loved ones, hey, what oils do you use? I guarantee you, you're gonna find someone who uses oils. They're that popular, right? So then you get a couple. Go online, see what you could see about some ratings. And then here's the thing, you gotta invest some time and money. This is your health. I know people, literally, that use essential oils to treat their cancer. I mean, that's what they're doing. Chemo failed them, radiation failed them. They're using oils and they're doing well. It's that important. So you go, you try these oils and ask the company, hey, can I have a test, an analysis of your oil? I'm interested in lemon, for example. I would get a starter kit, usually 40, 50 bucks, get a starter kit with lemon, peppermint, whatever they have, clove, and try them out. Put them on your skin, dilute them, you do a skin patch, it's very important. You know how when you get a carpet cleaner, they say, hey, go in that corner, put a, you know, clean the carpet in, you know, in an inconspicuous spot before you, you know, stain the whole thing. Same thing with essential oils. Dilute some with some coconut oil, put them on the back of your hand, and see what happens. If you break out in the hive, that's not a good sign that your body's responding to that. Or if you get redness or itching or burning. So you want to see how your body responds and you'll find interestingly enough that the oils that work for you might not work for someone else just because it's your body's chemistry. And so oh, yeah, our microbiome, our microbiome is different. Yes. The microbiome in our digestive system and on our skin really determines even how your body uses something like an essential oil, how it breaks it down, the chemical components that come out of it, you know, is all determined by our bacteria, which is different for everybody. Yep. And I got myself in trouble because I got to say, I'll confess, early on, I recommended from people to use a certain brand and they're like, hey, this thing works horribly. I'm like, you know what? I learned my lesson quick because again, you make a good point. The skin microbiome is one of the most largely misunderstood and ignored things on our body. And I've really done a lot of research on that and how to really maximize that. And that's one reason why I've came, come up with so many DIY recipes, Dan, because it's so important that we feed and nourish the healthy bacteria in the right way. Yeah, absolutely. So what's your website? DrEricZ.com. All right. That's easy, man. All right. Dr. Eric Z. That's a beautiful, man. That was a great answer. Honestly, I, I think that was a really honest answer. A great answer, you know, and uh, I agree with that answer. So, you know, do what he says, because I, I think that was beautiful advice. All right. So let's look. What, what about blood sugar? I'll throw some things out, Mary. I'll let you throw some things out. Blood sugar. You know, so many people, hormone uh, resistance, whether it's to insulin, leptin, estrogen, some essential oils that would help. First thing that comes to mind, we all know about cinnamon, right? Cinnamon everyone uses, and that's a great solution. My, my friend, uh, the diabetes coach, Dr. Brian Moll, has actually looked into this a little bit more, and he's found that two drinks. I, uh, I did a summit for Dr. Brian. Oh, yeah, yeah, awesome. Brian's a great guy, and he and I have done um, – really a lot of work. We actually wrote a book on this together and we have found that just a couple drops of cinnamon oil in a capsule, like a gel capsule, can have the same effect as a tablespoon of cinnamon powder. So cinnamon oil is very effective. Lavender, and folks, this isn't just internal. You can, you can inhale and also topical. We mustn't forget these oils are transdermal and once you apply them with a carrier oil on your body, and so for someone like with diabetes or battling a blood sugar issue, you might want to actually apply it over the pancreas. You might want to apply it over the abdomen. We have seen studies show that when you apply massage oil over the abdomen, within minutes, those chemicals in the oil are in your bloodstream. Yeah, absolutely. 20 minutes, 20 minutes only, and your whole body has the effect of the essential oil. But here's the key, Dan. Within four hours, it's out of your body. They become completely metabolized unlike drugs that have biochemical makeup. So that's the cool thing about oils. So yeah, um, and also don't forget ylang ylang. And the fun thing, and I say fun because I, I'm still gripping my brain around this. The fun thing about ylang ylang, it actually harmonizes the body. We have seen that for people that might be hyper and or hypoglycemic, it helps create balance. We're finding more research actually using the term harmonization. So sandalwood and um, ylang ylang are two oils that we've seen, clinically speaking, create homeostasis in the body. So I try to get people out of this whole medical mindset like, oh, I'm hyperglycemic. What do I do to fix it? No, like why are you hyperglycemic? But more importantly, let's get homeostasis in the body. And that's what we're finding essential oils can do. It's, it's, it's mind-blowing. 
Couldn't agree more, man. I, I, I love that response too. You're, I tell you what, you're, you're hitting it with me really well, you know, because I don't like pushing the body in one direction or another, mm -hmm. you know, unless you absolutely have to. The innate intelligence wants to bring homeostasis in herbs, no doubt, essential oils being an herb, product, part of an herb can bring that homeostasis and you know, that balance. Meredith, I know you've got all kinds of questions. I could see, I know that look she radiates. <laughs> Uh, you know me well, Dr. Trump. Well, yeah, I do have questions too. And I think kind of it's an interesting topic talking about the, the skin biome and back to that because oftentimes we think of just applying the, the oils topically on our skin, even though we like to diffuse them and, um, and we can even ingest them as well, which is another topic. But I'm wondering, um, you kind of mentioned briefly before that your wife had a really interesting healing story with her skin and, you know, um, and using essential oils for that. I was wondering if you could share that. Oh, perfect. Yeah. About 20 years ago. She, um, 24, actually, 24 years ago, she was 14 years old, beautiful young teenage girl, went on vacation to Minnesota. And her grandparents at the time that she was staying with had well water. And I don't remember what it was, but it was some knockoff facial cleanser that she got at Kmart. And she washed her hands, she washed her face with this, and there was a chemical reaction with the chemicals in the well water. And it literally burned from here down, burned the first three layers of her skin. Burn it oh, off. Like open sores. She wow. tried every ointment. She tried everything. She went to the doctor. Nothing could help. Her mother's best friend, um, Mrs. B, we call her, Cheryl Buck, um, is a Cherokee Indian. And she practices Ojibwa medicine. She goes, you have to use lavender. So she gave her a little starter kit, her first essential oil kit, now 24 years ago. And she gave her a, an ointment to make with some oil, with some aloe, and some lavender. Within weeks, her skin was healed. You look at her now, my wife, I mean, she's gorgeous. She's a pageant queen. She does her anti-aging, whatever she does. She's got it down pat, but it was lavender then that helped heal her skin. And from then on, essential oils has been part of everything that she's done. Again, with the birthing process, every time she competes, everything that she does, she utilizes the mindfulness aspect um, of essential oils. And not only that, but the therapeutic that goes on your skin. It's unbelievable. So again, I just knew that. I heard the story, and because I never experienced it myself, I just, eh, I kind of dismissed it until I started learning about these things. I'm like, oh, that's why that works. Mm. Well, yeah, I think it's so perfect, too, to kind of jump into, like, the emotional component and the aromatherapy component of the, the oils, too, and how they can so just affect our, our brain chemistry. Can you share on that and how that can kind of support our mental health? Yeah, that's a good question question and and i've been really deep recently into looking into emotional detoxing um, dan have you ever had anyone on your show talk about that one yet oh yeah no i mean we emotional component is something you know look you know physical uh, chemical and emotional removing these things is very critical to turn off bad genes right and um the emotional component is something that you know we really focused on in the last year so bring it let's talk about it how can the essential oils help with that yeah, essential oils, because we have seen that the science of smell is becoming so profound in the research world, we're really starting to tap into what it can trigger, how it could trigger back that emotional response when you were yeah. abused as a child. How can it trigger back, you know, it brings you back 30 years ago when you were just married and you smell your wife's perfume and it brings you back to your honeymoon. It, yeah. is, it, it imprints something in our mind. And so we need to be careful especially when we're dealing with grief and trauma, that we don't trigger those emotions back with certain smells. But while we heal using smells that bring us through, that smell can take you through the rest of your life. And so the research is profound. But yeah, we've seen, we always go back to the citrus oils because those have been shown clinically and traditionally to help boost mood, help with work-life balance. I mean, there's really a lot of studies out there, but it all goes back to what, work, what works for you. And, and really what I've been looking at more is about this emotional detox um, experience. We have to get ourselves where our mind can just calm, where our brain just stops with the wayward thoughts for just a few minutes and traditional scents, traditional incense like frankincense and yet like mm. lang lang, like sandalwood. There's so many other things. Like when you go to the Bible, look at the, look at the ancient anointing oil that God told Aaron to make, right? Or Moses. Yeah. And then we have cassia cinnamon and myrrh with calamus like those are all stuff you can get today yeah. and so that produces i mean you gotta think there was more than just a spiritual ritual behind that these oils actually help meditate they help us get in a higher state of consciousness 
And that's really what it boils down to. I really do believe as a Christian, it can help us walk through the mind of Christ much more because this toxic, this toxic overload with the, uh, the smells that we have all around us, these fragrances, the synthetic aerosols, that's attacking our ability to really tap into who we are. Yeah, I, I'll tell you what, I mean, just a matter of fact, let, let's just review this. The emotional detox, I heard frankincense, myrrh, what were some of the original? Write those down, Meredith, I'm writing them down too. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you can go to Exodus chapter 20, uh, 33, they, the, just the anointing oil, myrrh, calamus, cinnamon, cassia, that's a great recipe. Frankincense. There's a reason why frankincense was given to the Christ child. I mean, that was very important. And we have actually records that Egyptians used to put frankincense under the bottoms of their eye. Like you remember the um, the, the Egyptian eyeliner? In some parts of Egypt, that was burnt frankincense resin. Why? Because it, it produces a spiritual experience that helps you meditate. And so there's also anti-aging, I mean, healing mechanisms as well. So those are great. But also I find ylang Lang is very, very harmonizing, very balancing. But more importantly, what works for you? Like if you actually smell lavender, there are many people that actually get excited over lavender. It's not calming for everyone. And I want to be careful because we can't put anything in a box. And I found a lot of people do. And so, again, you have to find what works for you. Great. Awesome. Good advice. Such a good point. I believe someone told me, I don't know if maybe you know the study to back it up, but um, people were actually rubbing frankincense oil on cancer tumors and they were helping them to decrease. So is there evidence behind that? Yeah, unfortunately, when it comes to the research, most of what we have is um, in vitro. We have cells in a petri dish studies or we have animal studies. But I will tell you, I mean, I know a lot of people. A lot of people, the cytotoxic effects of not only frankincense, but you know what's even more effective according to the research? Myrrh, sandalwood, and anything with, with, with a chemical called D-limonene, which is in a lot of the citrus oils. Hey, you know what the best kept secret is? Orange. Orange is probably one of the cheapest, most cost-effective oils you can get on the market, and it's unbelievably effective at fighting cancer, produces that apoptotic effect, which is essentially cancer suicide, and it boosts the mood. It is very, very effective at a lot of things. The more I look into certain oils that are cost effective, I find, wow. I mean, it's, but now it's really important to get that indigenously sourced and as free of pesticides as possible because that peel is what the oil is made out of, not, yeah. the, not the juice. So if you're getting it from a Florida grove that's spraying the junk out of it, you're getting that into your skin, folks. Got to be careful. So I like getting my oils overseas where they don't use the unbelievable practices that America allows. Mm -hmm. yeah, Speaking of orange oil, um, I was just thinking, I, I love, I have a wild orange oil and I um, sometimes mix it with um, balsamic vinegar and olive oil and make a salad dressing out of it and I ingest it. So what do you think about ingesting some of these essential oils and possibly Dr. Pompa, the, the impact on the microbiome? Mm, great question, Meredith. Yeah, yeah. So good question when it comes to the microbiome. Well, first of all, it's safe if it's used wisely. Okay. But not all oils can be ingested, right? Um, ver yeah, not all of them can be ingested. There are certain, but even then, but you're right, there are certain that are known as toxic, like wintergreen is one that's, that's really problematic for a lot of folks because it can be, but then again, that's what flavors root beer. So I mean, how do you <laughs> balance that out? Folks, we gotta remember one thing. If you have a smell, well, I mean, going back to smell, anything with a fragrance, like your Bath and Body Works stuff, but anything with a flavor, like your lemon bars, your peppermint mint patties, if it has a natural flavor to it, that's an essential oil-based product. So it's all over the place. It's just a matter of dosage. So the problem is when someone gets a bottle and puts two, three drops in their mouth trying to prevent cancer, that could cause esophageal irritation, especially when you use peppermint because that's been shown to relax the esophageal sphincter so you get reflux. So it's problematic, but it's safe if you do it wisely. And really, the, the scheme of it all, like I like to, I like to make my own sm homemade smoothies. I'll put a straight up lemon, like a whole lemon in my smoothie. Well, that's about four drops of oil. So I'm consuming it in its natural form. So when you extract it, you're getting it out of its natural form. And I don't know what your thoughts about juicing are, Dr. Pompa, but for me, we should, we should be, you know, we should limit our juice intake because it's not in its natural form without the fiber, right? Same thing with oil. So you're not going to want to completely just overdose on juice or oils, but use therapeutically or like you said, Meredith, culinarily, it's awesome. 
a drop of cilantro in your in your guacamole? Are you kidding me? I mean, that's what we had at Super Bowl party over here, right? So we use them, but you know what? I also like to use them to enhance my experience. Like I love a little bit of liquid stevia with a drop of orange in my sparkling water. That's my soda pop. Again, for 13, 14 years, I haven't drank soda. I don't do any of that junk anymore. So I don't want to like, I don't live on rice cakes and wafers all day. I eat a very flavorful life or I eat a very flavorful diet and we enhance that with essential oils. So they're very safe, very effective, but you just got to be careful. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, I just had some bone broth this morning and I put some rosemary oil and lemon oil in it because I just, I didn't feel like, um, you know, like opening, you know, slicing an orange and getting the, the, the fresh rosemary herbs. So they're so convenient too, just when you want to kind of like whoop, drop right, right in your food. Always I'm dilute. So always I'm dilute. So boring compared to you guys. I got to add these things. I don't think of this. Meredith's just always thinking of all these things. <laughs> You're missing out. You're really missing out, but it's fun. But I got, I, I need to take a moment and just, we have to remember safety. It's super important. You never want to put oils on your body or in your body undiluted. You're just going to hurt yourself. And it's a waste. It really is a waste of money. Yeah, how do you dilute them? How do you, I, I, I always just put them on straight. See? No. I, I made a mistake and you know what? Dr. Papa, you might actually, you might cause what's known as a sensitization response. It's basically, you might cause your body to become allergic because it's high concentrated plant compounds. Our bodies aren't made by God to absorb in our skin. I mean, yeah. think you're not going to find lavender out in nature, a lavender oil out in nature. You have to extract it. So dilution helps with a few different ways. You get a carrier oil, opens up the pores. It actually helps your body absorb it more. It protects the skin. And what's really profound is that we find that it's going to do more for effectiveness than we actually think than just putting a drop because it prevents evaporation. Because remember, essential oils are the volatile organic compounds. It's the compounds that evaporate. So if you want your oils to go bad, keep your bottle open. Oxid oxidation are going to kill your oils like nothing. So carrier oils will prevent the evaporation and it helps you get the most concentration in the right way. Same so how do you do it? Tell us how you do it. What, what does it look like when you do it? Tell me how you do it. Yeah, so if I'm going to actually, you know, um, I just, my family and I just had a little flu thing a couple of weeks ago. So what I did, and it, my, my medicine was I got some, um, some coconut oil, some good unrefined organic coconut oil. I put a couple drops of, of an immunity blend that I like. It's um, very, very similar to one that, Meredith, you're talking about. I like having one with cinnamon and clove, lemon, orange, eucalyptus, and rosemary. You mix all those together, and you get, as a blend, you put one or two drops of that blend in, a little bit of honey, a little bit of, um, a little bit of uh, Himalayan sea salt. And I like taking that, like that right there is an immune boosting shot. If you really want an immune boosting shot, add some lipospheric vitamin C. I think that's great, a liquid version of that. But something like that, in my kids, that's my kids' medicine. That's how we internalize it. Um, but I don't do that every day. Like I did that for just a couple days to get through the flu. But when you're talking about topical, we want to keep things under a 3% dilution. So here's, here's in the aromatherapy world, it's all about percentages. Easiest way to remember it is this. One tablespoon of oil, like a carrier oil, whether it's jojoba, almond, coconut, fractionated coconut, you have 600 drops. So if you have a 3% dilution, 3% of 600 is 18, which means you can use up to 18 drops of an essential oil per tablespoon of a carrier oil, which is good standard safe dilution. When you're dealing with children and your face, because your face is sensitive, or your genitalia, for some people like to use these for, for, for issues down like vaginal infections or prostate issues, 1%, which is six drops per tablespoon. That is considered very safe. And for oils that are a little more hot, we call them, like the cloves and the oregano, be very careful, always dilute. So you don't want to do a one-to-one -one ratio. That's a 50% dilution. That can burn. And that's what happened to me early on, too. I didn't know what I was doing. So you just want to be careful. And it more does not mean better, especially with essential oils. So yeah, true. I put oregano oil directly on my skin one time, and oh, my gosh. Would never do that again. Major burn. <laughs>
Do not put oregano oil directly on your skin, anybody. But yeah, the fractionated coconut oil is what I tend to use as well. And it just, it goes on really smoothly. But I haven't always been as good about um, diluting it. And it's a really good reminder too, just with the importance of absorption and protection of our bodies too. Mm -hmm. So people are going to ask the question, you know, the, the different, you said fractionated coconut yeah. oil versus not. What's the difference and where do they buy it? Yeah, good, 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 good question. Um, fractionated is probably the carrier oil of choice if you're doing therapeutic things because it prevents oxidization and it helps penetrate, it, it, it penetrates the skin relatively immediately. So here's the problem with using regular coconut oil. So if you're trying to treat an illness, because it creates an essential barrier to your skin because it's so greasy. When you yeah. put fractionated oil on your skin, it goes right in. It's just like the oil. Like if you actually put a drop of essential oil on your skin, you're not going to see it in five to ten seconds. It absorbs that quick. Coconut oil doesn't. So fractionated coconut oil basically takes out the long chain fatty acids. So it allows just the medium chain fatty acids to absorb immediately. So it's a little more expensive. But I'm not using that for my lotions and my potions or my internal things. I'm using that for like, okay, I'm trying to help with a specific issue like blood pressure, like cancer, like um, a, a, in, you know, even a, um, a wound, great for wound care. So you use coconut oil, regular, jojoba, almond, even evening primrose for a nice um, lotion for your basic body care. They work great. But yeah, fractionated is the go-to, in my opinion, on very, very helpful. It's essentially yeah, the same as MCT oil, right? The fractionated coconut oil? Yeah, I mean, I guess I, I, I don't know enough about the manufacturer that's going to be selling the MCT oil. But yeah, in theory, it is. But again, I know Bulletproof and all these other folks have brain octanes. Like, I don't know what else is in that stuff. But essentially, it is. Um, but there might be even short-chain fatty acids. But it, essentially, it's taking up the long one. So... Yeah, just readily absorbable and it won't freeze up or it won't harden. Yes, the other thing. So yeah, essentially you can use MCT oil, um, but that could get pricey. Yeah, I mean, I, I you could buy fractionated coconut oil in most health food stores. Yeah. So. And on Amazon. All this stuff's available on Amazon, really. Yeah. Um, I, I try not to get my essential oils from Amazon if, unless it's from the direct source because you just don't know who Joe Schmo is selling. Uh, yeah. Again, folks, this is medicine. Like this is how my family and I take care of ourselves. I can count on one hand how many times my family and I have been on antibiotics the last 10 years. So when it comes to it, I want to get it from a good source. But when it comes to your carrier oils and things, you can find all those relatively um, inexpensive on Amazon from good suppliers. When you live your life from inside out, you know, knowing that the body heals itself, you know, I mean, I have you know, five kids, you know, none of my kids have ever taken an antibiotic in their entire lives. The, the cool thing is, is the, the two there right here, we adopted at age seven and they were on antibiotics all the time. They were a family member, their parents tragically died. And then we got them and they were never on antibiotic again. So, you know, point being is, is, you know, what changed <laughs> the philosophy changed. That's it. You know, their health and their DNA was the same. You know what changed? Uh, they miraculously needed all these antibiotics, and then miraculously, after we adopted them, they never needed another one. Uh, and they're amazing, healthy kids. So, yeah, I appreciate hearing that. Uh, this is great information. Man. I, I know people are going to love this show, right, Meredith? Yeah. You know, so, it is. Th yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you for uh, just. You know, there's a lot of myths. Uh, matter of fact, let, let's finish with one more big myth about essential oils that you have to battle and deal with, Dr. Eric. Essential oils are not safe, I've heard, for babies and pregnant women. Um, I'm currently write, writing a book. Um, I just signed a book deal with, with Harmony, an imprint of Penguin Random House. And it wasn't part of the book proposal, but I can't get away from this topic of women's health, specifically um, pregnancy, labor, and delivery. And I just have to tell folks, they are safe. We've used essential oils since birth on all of our children wisely, safely. My wife has used essential oils all through her pregnancies and has been a major, a major factor in how uh, well she produces milk because we exclusively breastfeed our babies for at least one year before introducing anything else. And yeah. so they are super, super safe. 
for infants, for children, but you have to use them wisely. Highly dilute them, be very careful, and use them the right way. So that's the other myth. I get lambasted by people. A, show me in the research because I got lots of research studies that I just came up with that I've seen that show how to use them. Labor, delivery, nursing, all that, even, even prenatal. So that's another big myth. What's the dilution you usually do for babies or children? Is it the 1% or even less? Yeah, even less. Up, less than up to 1% is what you want to do. And it's essentially, because you got to think, this the baby, you, you know what, I have four children, you have five, you know what it's like. The, a baby's skin is like a sponge. And so they get, oh, yeah. and it's just so little. We got to think two dosage. And that's my big issue when it comes to most drugs and the whole vaccine thing is just like the, little, the unbelievable amount of dosage to this little tiny human being. So you got to remember that with essential oils as well, plus aromatic use. Here, folks, remember this. This is really important. How many of you walk into Michael's or Joanne's Arts and, you know, and you get hit in the head with those smells? Well, I've seen babies from birth going to shop with mama. Hey, bless your heart. That's fine. So why would you think that aromatherapy through a diffuser would be harmful to your infant? You're putting your infant everywhere else. It doesn't even make sense, logically speaking. And that's the myth. That's the myth. Oh, you can't have peppermint or eucalyptus because it could cause respiratory arrest. Well, prove it. Because I know, I see kids going around Bath and Body Works with a cornucopia of smells and they're fine. So we've got to, folks, we need to use common sense. And that's yeah. so important because God's given us that measure of wisdom that we could use to really use things. Because here's, here's why I do what I do, is to empower us. So we don't have to go to the doctor all the time. So we know how to take care of ourselves. And we know we're not afraid to use things. Now, Dr. Eric, thanks for your expertise in this area. You know, Marith uh, has been wanting to bring this show and couldn't have brought a better guy you know, to bring this information to our listeners and viewers. So thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Thanks, Dr. Eric. Thanks, Dr. Pompa, as always. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll catch you next time and have a great weekend. Bye-bye.